secret friends unite! One. Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 456. This is your guide to the geek side. And I am Todd Oxtra, uh, recovering from COVID as we speak. So if I get a little loopy, I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm speaking in COVID. Um, (laughs) And and Charlie Carden here, by the way. Uh, Kudos to Todd for uh, for his his uh, valiant effort of stage health and playing through the pain, Uh, because when I had COVID, uh, it, it coincided with Thanksgiving. Uh, I was not fit to get on, and then Todd was gone. So, you know, good for Todd. Uh, I did tell him we were going to skip the seventh inning stretch where we get up and do jumping jacks. Uh, well, <laughs> because Todd might die. Um, but anyway, it is great to be here. We're recording on New Year's Eve during the day. Um, so Correct. 2023 is wrapping up. We're going to obviously be uh, dining on, probably talk a little bit about 2023, talking about kind of what we're uh, planning on uh, getting into 2024. But as always, we love to give proper love, respect, and reverence to the wonderful folks over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite, where you can visit and get a free one-week trial to check out our wares. I do a show. Todd and I do a show, uh, do a show together. We've got a lot of other uh, older content there. You have access to all the great interviews and, and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, on our Friends with Benefits level, we have Mr. John Sedorf, the awesome Phoenix Sisters cosplay, Brendan Myers, the Asian Sith mistress, number one Star Wars fan. Uh, and we're welcoming back Corey in HD. Corey left us for a little bit, but Corey is a great friend of the show, and we are glad to have him back. And uh, as we'd mentioned, as I think the third week in a row, Matthew Keel is our new Patreon. Uh, Matthew, friend of the show, friend of the network, going back many years, and we are glad to have him on board. Uh, on the BFF level, as always, the awesome Nias family, Sean, Stella, and Henry, and my dear friend, Missy Merchant. Uh, thank you to them and to everyone really who is listening to us again if you'd like to have a free sample of our patreon wares our various extra content it's patreon.com slash secret friends unite we would love to see you there and uh todd this cover you've chosen well, I we, tell you. matthew <laughs> is superpower so Matthew's oh my goodness power. yeah we missed that last oh, wait. time we, recorded. we got it. Yeah, wait, we wait wait dial back and todd what did you say about matthew <laughs> we have to give matt his new his superpower because he that's okay. one of the benefits of being a bff or friends with benefits um and because we were off last week just because of the holidays my relatives were here my in-laws so we're gonna hit it now so so charlie matt has recorded with us before he's been on before he is a huge music fan so I, I know and so that is definitely my focus on yes his superpower and it's going to be super finite because again like you would think oh what's in you know a, a really relative one is always a time traveler always a time traveler but the only p- time and place he can travel to is a a, a music concert of his choosing want to see the beatles at chase stadium in 1965 boom you can go there see the show come back uh, you know, want to see the uh, Beatles, you know, rooftop show in 1969. Beatles is where I'm stuck on this one. I'm not thinking, or the, the Stones at Altamont, or that terrible uh, show in uh, Cincinnati in 1978 with Who, where all those people got trampled. Hey, these are the only things I can think of. I don't think I'd want to see that one. Concert for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1995. I was there. So there you go. That's your power. Travel and go see shows. Go see Lou Reed in the Village in the 60s. Make it happen. So my superpower for Matt is going to be anybody who is around him, um, their personal soundtrack uh, or theme is generated. Like everybody can hear it. Like travel music? So like, or or something like that, you know, or like a theme song or like shaft, you know, plays in the background. Um, Something iconic. It could be, you know, uh, goodbye, stranger by super tramp. (laughs) Oh, oh, no. Oh, it's not super tramp that you hated Steely Dan. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, you're Uh, you're going to bring up super tramp. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody has a music group. They hate for me. It's Dave Matthews band. It's okay. At me over on threads. It's all right. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, Steely Dan. Never, never, please, never. 
Oh my goodness. Well, let's go. Well, Matthew, again, thank you for your support. And I apologize for almost skimming over you. But one thing that can't be skimmed on is this awesome cover from December of 1949, the year my, my dad was born. Also, the year Rick Springfield was born. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? Do you think about you musical icons? You're like, oh, he's the same age as my parents. That's weird. But anyway, 52 awesome pages of Batman, I'm assuming, uh, volume one. Uh, uh, and the, these were always bi-monthly, so this was December of 49 and January of 1950, right into the new decade for 10 cents for, uh, for 50. So that's what? That's half a, half a penny a page? Am I, is my math wrong? Five pretty cents? pretty cheap, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah. But anyway, this is uh, th th this is quite a thing happening here. So, uh, Batman, it says in this issue, the dynamic duo in a swashbuckling South American adventure, in quotation marks, ride, bat umbre, ride. And it's Batman and Robin on two gray steeds. Batman has a uh, basically a, uh, a, a scarf or a sweat. What would you call that? It's not a scarf. Uh it's like, it's like a, a sash, like a bandolier, but without any of the. And then you have these, uh, you have these South American maidens. Well, you got You got two. You got three of them. Two of them in the back are swooning, and the one in the front looks like she's afraid for her life because those horses she's going are going to be stumped. Her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's stampeded by uh, yeah, horses. Exactly. So yeah. obviously, I mean, I'm I'm curious, and Todd, it's been an awfully long time. Maybe this is a segment we need to look at, like for first quarter. But remember how we. You used to go back and pull a comic, yep, with random that, that comic featured, generator from our titles. You know? Yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. So I'm, I, I would say put that, put that somewhere on the docket for first quarter because I'm totally okay. down. And we'll, we'll get a guest sure. who will read along with us. Um, yeah, I think that'd be fun because it has been a, it's been a few years since we've done that. But, um, yeah, but anyway, so, let, yeah. let me give you the synopsis, Charlie. Oh, please. So, after, <laughs> so the synopsis for the comic is after saving the president of Montigua from an assassination <laughs> attempt. <laughs> sing me loud, sing me Montigua Bay. Do, yes. Do, do. <laughs> Yes, known for its rum and other fine beverages. Mm, uh, Batman and Robin are asked to uh, train a new Batman to fight off Mantigua's greatest threat, El Papagayo. <laughs> Batman and Ryan, Robin do their best to train a new Batman, but their efforts are futile and they capture the criminals with help from the local police. And I like this because Antigua or El P is Papagayo uh, is the antagonist. He has a parrot named Toto and uh, <laughs> Luis Peralta. Bless is the rain El Hombre, and uh, his he has a single appearance, and it says dies. And Pancho <laughs> single appearance dies. dies. Felipe lived, <laughs> and it, it, it turns out that he's actually Raz Agul. I can't believe it. Um, yes, I would enjoy uh, reading this very much. Um, and Todd, I know that you didn't actually have to look that up because you got the synopsis firsthand from our senior news correspondent. Now she was in her late 1940s when this came out, but Madam Webb is a, is a huge bat fan. So I know that she's read every single issue that's ever been out, but right now she's down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine trying to stay warm, a little chilly out there, even in California, but she's got the latest news and scoops for us. So let's go. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Well, Charlie, uh, you brought up a good point. Uh, Madam Web was actually uh, the inspiration for Ava Perone or Avita, and uh, Madam Web was actually the leader of uh, Montigua, and she coined the song "Don't Cry for Me, Montigua." I want to steal all of your riches. All your papayas you and gold coins and doubloons. Oh my goodness! All right, well. Uh, it was funny. April and I were watching this Nat Geo like ret retrospective about the '90s, and one of them, of course, is about TV, and and it was and featured this wonderful program. Uh, Todd, now X Files. That's one of your faves, as I recall, and I know we've even talked about doing a, a season of it over on uh, on the Patreon on the uh, the Facts of Geek Life. But um, now the property is, of course, owned by the good folks at Disney, and they're looking to maybe doing a reboot. So break it down for me. Yeah, um, so apparently uh, Chris Carter, who was the creator of X-Files, is working with Ryan Coogler for a reboot. So Ryan Coogler, you know, Black Panther, also did the, the uh, Creed movies, uh, highly successful. And he's looking to do something now because I believe that um, uh, 
blinking on his name the the creed is actually taking over those oh. movies directing them uh michael oh, b. Uh, jordan, michael b. jordan. Yeah. there you go yeah yeah so he's taking over that so ryan coogler is looking for new projects so um and this is kind of neat because there was an interview in march uh where coogler talked about it that they want to do it and little else is known um in it's it's kind of interesting the fact that um it's kind of a no brainer that it would make sense to do it. The X Files never, I mean, in regards to the the, the concept, very easy. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. You know, the FBI investigating these things. They have a branch that investigates supernatural things like that. Um, kind of a big deal at the time in the early nineties yeah. when it came out. Yeah, and now it seems like genre is so much bigger. You could do this in a in the right way um, if you can nail it. Now, X Files has kind of failed with its movies, uh, also its spinoffs. Um, right. There was the uh, the Lone was, Gunman, the Millennium. Yeah, it, there was a rekindling uh, back in 2018. And I had no idea, as I'm scrolling through, I had no idea there was an animated comedy series called The X-Files Albuquerque. When the hell was that on and who what? showed it? I'm, scroll down. I'm serious. I'm. It's right below where they talk about the movies here in this article. I know we're really well prepared, folks. You're oh, it was given a script commitment, but they never did anything. Oh, that. that's why I've not heard of it. Okay. Entirely. <laughs> Right. Okay. Well, then we're then 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 we're both guilty of not reading. Um, but and this is fascinating. This is a particular favorite of my mother's, uh, and I've talked uh, on and on that you know I grew up in a Fox household because my mom was a sales rep at the local station here in Grand Rapids, so that was the station that was always on. So from 1987 till certainly 1994 when I graduated from high school, Fox was always on in my house uh, when I was living here. So yeah, so this was when we jumped into and we loved it as a family, watched it as a family. Um, so uh, yeah, so this would be, yeah, it would be exciting to see kind of how this comes back around uh, to be something kind of new and different uh, for the new age. Now, in a reboot, I assume we're moving on with potentially a, you know, a new cast, New kid, because again, like you said, the concept is evergreen. It's not tied back. It's like it's like NCIS, right? Like, hey, there can always be another dead, you know, chief petty officer down at the boat dock or something. Or then they can have it in Australia, which is their, which is their new show that I watched. You know, so um, yeah, no, I mean that would uh, that would be exciting. Now Disney doing it, I wonder if that involves Fox. But I mean, they own Fox, so will it be on TV? Will it be streaming? You know. Who's Hulu is probably the best place for it, uh, which is well, part of Disney. Which, while it still exists, which <laughs> exactly? I mean, they yeah. own FX, so it could yeah. go on FX, then go to Hulu. But I mean, yeah. who's really watching FX these days? Um, good question. Uh, in the regards to this, even then, uh, Jillian Anderson says she's not really interested in going back to it. Uh, yeah. David Coveney, I think he would be open to it. I'm, I. Quite honestly, in 2018, when the Eleven uh, season came out, I don't remember if anything changed where it's like they were dead or I, I can't remember where that ended because that was kind of I a think, mixed I, bag. I think they were finally a couple, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Th that's that's what I remember. And Joel McHale was on it. For some oh, reason. that's right. Yeah, that, he, yeah, yeah, he was involved. He was kind of like a, I think he was a news reporter or something like that. But um, there you go. Yeah, yeah, all the all the rest of the people, you know, quite honestly, are getting old. Mitch Pelegi, I I'm guessing he's still alive. Maybe. I mean, uh, and and you know, William, what's his butt? The cigarette smoking man. He's still alive. Believe it or not. Oh, he was in the movie. We didn't we didn't yeah. even mention that he was yeah. in um the, uh, the, Once Upon a Knife. Yeah, no, uh, it's a wonderful knife. Once upon a knife. It's a, once, once upon a knife. A wonderful that's knife. That's yeah. how memorable it was. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that I think it'd be pretty cool. So yeah, I'm. Well, he blew up in the series. He he was he was exploded in the series. So oh, I don't was he? he? I don't I I don't even remember. Oh, Charlie, I, that was something I I remember just recently. I watched an episode. It was the the season where uh, Scully and Mulder weren't in. So it was Robert Patrick. Oh, and Annabelle and, Gish. Yeah. Yes. And there was an episode about the cigarette, cigarette smoking man was like hide it, hit away in like the, uh, in his car. the, like an Adobe cavern where the aliens could stop people from coming there. And he was kind of like smoking and hanging out with a Indians. <laughs> and there was a helicopter with <laughs> missiles that shot it and he blew up. It was so weird. It was so oh. bad. Like, wow. wow. 
Yeah, you should watch that last. Yeah, that season is bad. Oh my god, that's that's <laughs> crazy. That's like the uh, that's that's a Bobby in the shower scene kind of quality right there. Good stuff. Exactly. All yeah. right. Well, moving along. Uh, now, in the last few years, we uh, we're all pretty unanimous in enjoying um, the uh, Cobra Kai over on ne- it's Netflix, right? Um, but mm-hmm. now Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan, who was in the rebooting. Now, I'm trying to remember if there was any, I mean, there is some kind of connection between those films with Ralph Macchio, not the comic book guy, and then uh, Jackie Chan with Jaden Smith, same universe, potentially? Maybe. That's where I don't know either. So they're talking about merging the two and making something new out of it in a movie. Mm-hmm. And apparently they're casting for it. And it becomes basically the Karate Kid cinematic universe, which, you know, everybody loves right. cinematic universe. That's, that's all that exists. Know. Everything is, everything exactly. is connected. It's all that so, exists. So, yeah. So they aren't specific about um, how they would actually connect. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it would be like a big team up like, hey, it's the Avengers plus Wakanda. It's, you know, that kind of thing. Like then they have to fight. Tha- they have to fight Thanos. That's it. Thanos pops out of a hole somewhere and they got to do karate on Thanos. There's your movie. Exactly. A snap. Now, I never saw the 2010 film, so I couldn't tell you like if it's still uh, he's like actually maybe he's Mr. Miyagi's sibling that we didn't know about. Maybe <laughs> I'm his cousin. <laughs> Are they in Reseda as well? Like they never ran into each other in Reseda? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. In the valley. Yeah, it's there are nooks and crannies in the valleys with lots of different relatives that you don't know how they got there. But uh, Cobra Kai, one more more season coming up? Yeah, season six, uh, I think, may come out in 2024. May come out in 2024. I believe that's going to wrap up. And yeah, their their intention is to continue to do more with the franchise, which makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've heard even more about maybe a spinoff with just uh, William Zabka, you know, uh, and doing something else. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. But well, and I'm we, curious and how they pull this off. Yeah. And, and this does mention and it's just like, pew, although I, perhaps we'd heard of it before, but there is a Karate Kid film coming out this time next year that is mentioned here. Right. At the that's bottom of the that's yeah. what. And that's yeah, that, what Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan are trying to uh, yeah. uh, get some hype for. Although, um, although it doesn't say if, if Jackie Chan is in the film. Um, but so, you No, know, he is going to be in it. They're both okay. going to be in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, my, oh, my no, question is really. Oh, oh, Billy Zabka. They say, they, they say, yeah, yeah. They, say, they say they don't know if Billy he Zabka may not be in the film. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Gotcha. So my, my key question is, will we get the next Karate Kid, Hilary Swank? In finally in Cobra Kai or in this movie, I can't afford her. My goodness, she's you know, she won an Oscar, didn't she? Or was nominated? I don't know, she did, but what she is did, she yeah. up to? The last thing I saw her in, and I love this movie, it was it was a it was a COVID movie, it was The Hunt with uh Betty Gilpin. And at uh, the end of it, sorry to spoil it for you, Hillary, you see it throughout the movie, Hillary Swank is the villain who's pulling all the strings, and the film ends with them in a huge punch up all around uh, Hillary Swank's big fancy house. It was, it was, I have that on my hand dango. You should watch it. That was the liberal rage movie, wasn't it? Yes. Big time. It was, it was liberals kidnapping (laughs) people to hunt them for sport in like Yugoslavia or something like they would. That's too funny. Yeah. It's a, you should, you should watch it. I think you'd enjoy it. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. Liberal rage, conservative rage, all these silly rages. Yeah. Rages, rages. So, all right, well, moving on. And now this next one, you, you, I know that you got a little nervous when I posted this because you're like, I didn't finish What If Season 2. I didn't finish it. I don't want to be spoiled. But um, for no reason at all, and this just kind of popped up, and I didn't even – I wouldn't have even known to look at it because I'm not going to lie to you. I spend most of my time on YouTube these days, which is weird. But I have YouTube, and I even did the YouTube premium, so I don't have to deal with the mm-hmm. commercials anymore. Um, but I, uh, one of the, the YouTubers I really love is Eric Foss, Young Rockstars, and he was doing a breakdown episode by episode and as he's doing the finale which we're not going to talk about because todd hasn't seen it he mentioned that and disney dropped a clip today of season three and we're like clip of season three um and so by the time we backed out yeah by the time we backed out this this was up on my radar screen so we watched this two minute screen uh this two minute clip uh and it is simply uh it's taken place in the 80s or 90s and it's uh it's uh Bucky as the Winter Soldier, and then it's a very young version of David Harbour as the Red Guardian, and they're together, you know, in a car, kind of like, it looked like the Supernatural car. What kind of, Was it a Cobra? What kind of vehicle was that? 
It was a, fa- it was like a muscle either Camaro, a Camaro, uh, probably Camaro. Yeah. Okay. And they're, yeah, they're, they're driving along and, you know, a red guardians running in his mouth and Bucky saying nothing. And they come up on a police blockade and they're like, Oh, fine. I'll wait it through. And then the co- a cop comes up and starts talking to him. And it's, it's the voice of Larry Fishburne, isn't it? Yes. Who was Bill Foster in the Ant-Man. The, the, the Ant-Man continuity uh, that we mm-hmm. knew. Um, but kind of weird that he was a cop, but again, this is what if, so anyway, it doesn't go well. And these guys start, these guys take off and then it's a police chase for two minutes. So it looked fun. And, you know, red guardian is a dumb, dumb and he's yakking away. And then Bucky's, you know, pulling out machine guns and in grenade launchers and shooting stuff. And, uh, it just looks like fun. The only thing that really kind of made, I turned to April and said, uh, is that at the end of the clip, it says, what if season three coming soon? And I'm like, well, if coming soon is 12 months, then it's definitely coming soon because they're not going to drop season three after season two just wrapped. And uh, it was two years between seasons one and two. Yeah. 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 Season one was out in the end of 2021. So um, so I'm hoping it would make no sense for them to drop this at all if it was two years away. But then again, what the hell do I know? Just whet our appetite for something we can't have. But anyway, I thought this looked fun. And I, Todd, I immensely enjoyed What If. I would encourage you to finish watching it. I think season, mm-hmm. one, was, season one was better than season well, two. And I like season two. Or I like season one. So, no, I definitely thought it was better. So, anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in, in uh, what we've been watching. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to be interesting, yeah, because they're layering on some points that, you know, hey, we're going to see more with Red Guardian because, you know, we really didn't see Red Guardian as prime. Right. Uh, this is obviously taking past, taking place in the past with mm-hmm. Winter Soldier having more adventures before, uh, you know, he he came, you know, where we know of him because we reintroduced him in, into him with um, when Ant-Man, the original Ant-Man is young, too. So yeah. we're talking yeah. the 80s. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the the scene we saw at the beginning of Ant Man, which took place in the Triskelion, and it was it was the de ageified Michael Douglas resigning. That was nineteen eighty nine. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. So it could that that would uh, that yep. would that would serve to remember. now. And it did it. Now this makes a very good point. Uh, the clip featuring the Winter Soldier and the Red Guardian is centering between two characters that will be featured in July of twenty twenty five in the Thunderbolts film. So you can kind of see, mm-hmm. yeah. it, it kind of gives you the vibe that we could, you know, end up seeing this in uh, in fourth quarter of 2024. So regardless, like I said, what if is of the things that that I've enjoyed of Marvel since the end of Endgame, what if is is potentially been what I've enjoyed the most? I don't know. Um, but yeah, this it was pretty fun. Pretty yeah, um, fun. it kind of reminds me of like Star Wars Visions. Like, you know, just these obviously are half hour long episodes where Visions are typically right. 10 minutes 15 yeah. uh, where it's just basically giving little bits and pieces of things which is good because then you feel like well if it doesn't work then it's only still 30 minutes of something that doesn't work versus right hey here's eight here's eight hours of something that oh doesn't God. work and enjoy right. the ride like anywhere like between a, anywhere between a two movie that, oh my like God, secret, secret invasion. invasion i know yeah. yeah no secret wars better work or disney is really screwed <laughs> you know especially Oopsie. after all that they're going through um so todd exactly. have you uh have you have you ended up watching any of star trek prodigy when it was on before i believe i watched the first three episodes okay. and didn't go back to it my wife was actually checking it out now that it's on netflix and, nice exactly um i don't think she cared for it i, oh, okay. I kind of felt like she felt like this doesn't feel like star trek and i'm like well you kind of have to glom on a little bit longer to get there there's a connection she was right like, yeah that's fine well <laughs> so yeah. i think she's like eh, it didn't grab her I mean, you know, and again, and she's not a trekker, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's not really a thing for her. You've she never mentioned a lot of TNG, like a lot of oh, people. Okay, she watched she watched a lot of TNG. Voyager, I mean, that's that's that true. Era. That's yeah. that's true of any of us who lived in the '90s. It was yeah. kind of it was kind of hard to avoid. Um, but anyway, uh, Prodigy did just on Christmas Day drop on Netflix. The I'm assuming the entire first season. I haven't even looked. I feel bad. Yes, um, because I own the entire first season because this was uh, because it got dropped by Paramount Plus back in the summertime. Huge uproar. Got shopped around next. Netflix picked it up a couple of months ago um, and they're going to also give us the completed season two Um, but uh, during that brief window I went and I picked up what was available at the time which was season the first half of the season I checked back a couple weeks later the entire season was there which is great but I haven't gone back and revisited it but it's it's I mean it's very enjoyable Um, but it has shot to the uh, on Netflix top 10 lists in different categories all over the world it's hugely popular this has been successful, you know, because you're dropping 
something built for kids that has a Star Trek name attached to it, which has, you know, brand familiarity, unlike almost anything else with the 60 year old franchise. Um, and, it, and it's made for kids and it's clicking. Um, so this is pretty exciting. I mean, it is still weird and people are myself included a little sour that, you know, uh, prodigy was the, the redheaded stepchild of the star Trek family and they just got the boot. Um, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm, you know, I'm enthusiastic to see that it's successful and I would imagine um, that it will only be, uh, uh, you know, a matter of weeks or or a couple of months until we we get an announcement on season two, which is great because we don't have, with the exception of Star Trek Discovery, of which we have April as a month that it's going to come out. We don't have a release date. Um, so you know, over on uh, Code Forty Seven, we're we're doing different things to keep ourselves busy because we're not going to have new content for a while. So this is exciting. No, I'm sorry to hear your your wife didn't enjoy it, but again, it is really focused on kids it's got a very strong voyager vibe because you know uh kate mulgrew is providing the voice of of the mentor character the mentor janeway hologram um and it, you know the season has a great conclusion um and there's a lot of great episodes in between so you know i i would recommend it i enjoy it if you haven't checked it out i know when we were at the grand rampants comic-con work in the booth for the petoskey for our star trek fan club i was having a chat with one of the Ghostbusters guys at the booth next to us. And he said, my kids and I started watching it. They were really digging it. And then it was gone. And so I had to tell him the story. And I said, yeah, you know, Netflix picked it up. You'll be seeing it later this year. So I'm struggling to remember the guy's name. I doubt very much he would be listening to our show. But I will send my energy out into the universe. And hopefully he will pick up on the fact that when he turns on Netflix, it'll be there for him and his kids to watch. So this is good news. I like it. Yeah, I was looking at the numbers for uh, Paramount Plus has about, I think the latest number is like 60 million subscribers. Yeah. Paramount is a weird service because yes, it so. does have the, the, the Viacom stuff, but it's also got like a lot of adults and sports Show, yeah, stuff. Showtime so it's, it's and, yeah, Showtime. It's hard to know how many people are actually specific looking, looking for like a, an animated Star Trek show. Right. I mean, obviously we find like Lower Decks, but you know, that was made specifically for Star Trek fans where uh, Prodigy was going after a different audience because it was yeah. actually launching on Netflix or on right. Nickelodeon. Yeah, Nickelodeon. So a little different. Which, yeah, got, yeah. yeah, it got bubbled up. So yeah, exactly. Where where Netflix has, you know, close to 300 million subscribers worldwide. Right. So it becomes a scenario where the likelihood that they will, uh, people would probably find this show is probably greater. Much than greater. you do have yeah. like, so I think that's a, a good thing. And, and Netflix has been really good for shows finding new homes. So I know people complain about Netflix like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, literally, it's saved shows. It's given shows second lives and made yeah. them highly successful. Right. Like Shit's Creek or, yeah. um, you know, that Cobra show. Kai. Cobra Kai. Revived. Yeah, that was on YouTube. Yeah, had original series, right. And left and went to Netflix. So, right. uh, kudos to Netflix for doing this. And yeah. if it finds another life, uh, we're getting a second season. Right, a third season may happen depending on the success of season two. Probably more well, so it, than and it's doing. And it seems likely that it would be successful. Yeah, uh, just based well, on that. Oh, that's good. I love it. All right, so the big. I'll let you tackle this one. But the big stink. It was funny because I saw some guy who dropped a picture of uh, one of the involved people in it, and I'm like, okay, so what? This guy was like, oh, don't you know who this who this bad man is? I'm like, okay. But anyway, Todd. It, was it Zaslov? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay. Oh, God, God. Yeah, I was just trolling yeah. this guy. But anyway, you know me. But anyway, what's going on yeah. here? What's 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 the merger news? So you're a merger, you're a merger and acquisitions guy. I know that that's your love. Yeah, in the world of streaming, it's really, really hard to be successful. We've got like Netflix is the biggest, baddest, then Disney Plus, and then you get like the Paramount Pluses, you get the Apple TV Plus and, and subscription services. Um, a lot of people are finding out that there's just too many, and it's hard to determine, you know, what should I subscribe to, how long, and the costs are going up. So we know there will be a reckoning, and it will be hard to understand, especially as we've heard like services are losing billions of dollars and aren't profitable yet, and that's why advertising is coming to everyone because advertising is money and it's right. continually coming in versus just the six bucks a month you pay them. It's, so, um, and it's, it's so bizarre to watch people like chafe against that. Like, well, but, but I, I paid for it and it's ad free and it was ad free 15 years ago. Why is it still ad free? Cause they're yeah, not making any money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people no, I would say yeah. like, yeah, I would say like a service like, uh, you know, prime that's adding ads. I'm like, well, I paid for it for a year mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem fair. Like since I already paid for it and I said what I was paying for that. Now I get ads. 
I could say it like, well, oh, I'm resubscribing. Now there will be ads. I totally get that. But I don't like that when they change. They like, just, the just actual plug, plug it in. Contract I'm in. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird. But I, it is what it is. So that's, uh, that's, that, that's really the way I feel about it. It is what it is. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. I could turn it off. I right. can't not watch their shows, which means I'm not using part of the subscription then. It's like, well, I'm right. not really doing anything to piss them off because I still paid them. So yeah, right. <laughs> Me. Yeah, democracy pay with your wallet i pay. lost uh, yeah speak with your wallet speak with it <laughs> yeah yeah so this this story is really about there's talks about some potential mergers coming uh because they realize to do well in streaming you got to be big uh, yeah being small doesn't get you anywhere so wb and paramount are potentially which would be paramount plus and wb yep. would be max uh max. mask discovery uh are potentially looking at a merger now sherry redstone owns paramount she's kind of like the primary person uh, right. i believe the, the the parent company is called like something amusements which is weird i'm like amusements. oh did not know that um so because of that david zaslov who is the, the head the bad, of the, the bad man <laughs> he is not a good guy no he's a he's a he's a he's a cost cutter he's a saver he's not a creative um he is looking to he has been meeting with uh paramount global ceo bob backish um, and they're talking about potentially getting together and merging. So Mm-mm. this is going to be interesting because anytime we've had a merger happen in between, you know, Warner Brothers and Paramount, uh, we had it with Disney and Fox. You're going to effectively reduce the number of projects coming out of them. You do. Right. You, you, you will lose headcount. You will lose the amount of uh, sub sub imprints, things like that. Mm-hmm. And you'll have more, less projects coming out and potentially projects that will be, you know, the next big thing or they're small right. and they grow, right. do big things. Yeah. So because of that, there's a lot of people nervous that this is not a good plan for the success of creative we already saw what wb has done with removing content canceling projects for tax purposes and paramount now you know they're trying to grow star trek and other properties live sports there's a lot of things that are funky here but obviously they see potentially by merging charlie five billion dollars annually in uh savings synergies synergy which means probably firing a lot of people <laughs> well exactly you don't you know you don't hey well i have you know twenty thousand people in this division and you have thirty thousand people in this division and we don't need fifty thousand people in this division we need 15 <laughs> so yeah exactly. uh, i mean that exactly. sucks you're 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 you know yeah you're absolutely right um but you know is the other you know the other side of it is is that yeah to really win you have to be big um but if they you know what are you know what are the alternatives if they didn't merge because it seems like when this is rolling um what are the chances that it's going to fall apart these things just they they seem to they seem to go the distance disney went the distance when they acquired fox and that took a number they took two or three years i think to happen so <sighs> You know, if, yeah, if it's, yeah, if it's got legs, but yeah, you're right Uh, for creatives bad. I mean, that is even, even the headline that you chose here is that the merger would be bad for everyone except the shareholders because yeah, the shareholder is going to make bucks because now, and now money's not going into a lot of different buckets. It's going into the, the big barf pail that is WP Paramount. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Zaslav's not a good guy. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and so for us who like watching things, uh, the negative thing can be sometimes like now that Disney owns all of the Fox Marvel characters, um, you know, we at least knew we were going to get a Fantastic Four thing every once in a while. We're going to get an X-Men thing every once in a while. Right Right. now, we know we're getting a Fantastic Four. We have no clue when we're getting the X-Men again. And that's the problem. Now it's like it could be decades until we get an X-Men film. So so you often may not get something you like as frequently because it just um, can push we back. can say we own the characters and we can bring them out whenever we want because we've got other things. Yeah, right. So it could be frustrating for fans of a certain things that are owned by franchises. I don't think Star Trek will fare well. You know that's the thing. Could a merger then change the leadership that's in charge of Star Trek? Like, no. could I they mean, say anything? Could oh, we don't yeah. like what you're doing? Zavlaws could change his mind. It's like, hey, you know, you've done all these great things, but they're not generating enough revenue. We're gonna put that on hold and we're gonna pivot. 
Yeah. Who knows? I mean, Star Trek has been on the shelf before, but it always tends to mm-hmm. come back around. But yeah, I, I certainly don't want to be, you know, collecting my social security the next time I see a new Star Trek show. Oh, yeah. man, I don't know. But it, yeah, you know what? Uh, to, to put a pin in this, I would simply say it ain't show friends, it's show business. And yeah, it's all it's all yeah. about the bucks. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Well, that's a precursor to 2024. We're going to see a lot of changes in the industry obviously there won't be a strike this year coming right. up thank god but you know there could be more crazy things with strikes of other organizations right we could see like oh uh the uh stunt doubles are going to go on strike the mm-hmm. um teamsters are going to go on strike and the, the production crews maybe they don't want to run so yeah yeah i'm hoping we're going to have some downtime and disruptions yeah, you better believe it. All right. Well, uh, before we move on to getting the heck out of this place, uh, or excuse me, not getting the heck out of this place because Madam Webb's a lovely woman and we love spending time with her, but it is time to move right along, Todd. I've got to get out that Fuber app, that Feeble Uber app. The Geek Easy awaits uh, so that we can talk about things that we're enjoying, but we'll do that right after this message. Hey, Secret Friends Unite, let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. Provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash SFU and use our code SFU, and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy, cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. Well, Charlie, I'm at that point where I've run through most of my like shows I watch at night to help me fall asleep, which are like, you know, Futurama, Family Guy, Cleveland Show. I've I'm like, okay, I need something new. So I was looking around for just a new comedy or something I can I mean, watch with a little smile on my face before I go to bed. And I found one. It's on Hulu. And it's a British show called Extraordinary. Hmm. And it's a very fun show. It's 30 minutes long. It has a hook, though, that's sci-fi. So this is essentially alternate Britain where everybody gets a power by their 18th birthday, like a superpower. Oh, uh, there's mutant. people that, so yeah, pretty much like some people can rewind time. Some people can do things. Well, our main character is. Um, she does not has not had her power arrive yet. She's 24 Uh-oh. or so. Yeah. And she's kind of a ne'er do well, kind of kind of like always in trouble, hasn't really found a, a path to success. She's 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 a nice girl, but with a lot of problems. She lives with uh, three friends. Uh, one uh, the, the two friends she lives with our our couple. The one guy he can rewind time. And uh, her other roommate that she went to high school with, she can channel the dead, which is kind of cool. And it's used as a as a as a plot point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main mm-hmm. character, um, her her father died. Her mother's been remarried uh, to an interesting guy, and she's got a sister that she struggles with um, just from a relationship status. And really, it's 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 a very R rated show. There's 
unbridled talk about sex. Uh, language is on the table, and it's a lot of fun. It's very funny, and um, I'm enjoying quite a bit because there's the yeah. conundrum. The main piece is she wants to get her power, but um, she's a self sabotaging person. She works like in a, a costume shop, and. Uh, like it sells costumes to people or rents them and, and yeah. she's kind of stuck in life. And that's where I'm at in the show. And it's like, I've gone mm-hmm. through six episodes and it's hilarious. That's I think good. you'd really enjoy it. Any, it's very funny. The cast is very good. Any name actors or anybody that you would be like, no, Hey, Oh no, this, if there is, I wouldn't recognize them. Like I said, it's yeah. very British. It's very modern show. It's, so it's I think new. it's a 2023 show. Oh, okay. It's new. Yep. And it's on Hulu and I'm not sure where they picked it up from, but I, I hope it's doing well. Cause yeah. I really enjoy it. It's funny. The use of powers are, are well done. Like the one guy, yeah. he wants to be a vigilante. So he tries to get a team of vigilantes together. Oh, God. The people that come forward with their powers It kind of reminds me of mystery men in a lot of ways <laughs> because <laughs> you don't see like, like real in this world. As far as I know, there's like no real, like big superheroes doing heroic things. It's just, power is our way of life and everybody like kind of kind of deals with it like the one girl she goes in a job interview and the the person she's interviewing with it has her power is to make everyone tell the truth yeah. just imagine if you were in that situation in a job interview and you had to tell the truth oh my god <laughs> it's, it's like it's like that jim carrey movie liar liar <sighs> exactly so uh i highly recommend everybody check out extraordinary it's all out there i think it's eight episodes yeah i hope it gets a second season nice good deal all right well we have uh we have the rebel moon <laughs> part one part one. Now we were talking a little bit about, uh, Zack Snyder in the B roll. Uh, now this is his third. It's a uh, second of, of third so far. I basically IP original, uh, pieces of work that he's done. The first was, as we were talking about was, was sucker punch. And that was back in sucker the, punch, the, yep. er, the early aughts or the early teens. And, it was uh, 2014. So oh, okay. So the teens. All right. And, uh, I couldn't watch 10 minutes of it. It was one of those. I was flipping by it back, back in the days when we flipped and Todd, you watched the whole thing. And where, <laughs> where did you land with a, you know, Snyder number one? Uh, despised it. Horrible story, yep. bad storytelling. It almost felt like, um, it was a music video that they decided, oh, this is cool looking. Let's make it into a movie. Right. But we, our script is two pages long. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it was very eighties. Yeah. It kind of felt like it was like, it was a rock video. And then now we have this. And so this is to, to very shortly, this was the pitch that the almighty Snyder had for the Star Wars people back in, was it pre-Disney or was it just Disney? It was pre-Disney. Gonna, yeah, no, so it was it would, pre-Disney. It would have been probably right after, no, it would have been before Sucker Punch because the Disney acquisition happened in, I, I thought it happened in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, this is his Star Wars take. So Todd, take it away. Yeah, so so Rebel Moon is Zack Snyder's, like you said, it's a science fiction fantasy film that is essentially a take on the evil empire and um, that are oppressing the people. And uh, someone is forced to, who has abandoned the, uh, the, the empire, right. is forced to uh, use their abilities to fight the empire. That's really all it is. And right. this is... This, this is based on Star Wars, but also The Seven Samurai, which yeah, of Star course. Wars was based on. Right. So very, very gathering, Yeah. This this movie is all about gathering a team for retribution with rebels against the evil empire. Right. I mean, that's it. And I mean, the, that's all it is. Right. And so uh, treading upon trodden ground, uh, I would think we as, as viewers, as, you know, I won't say sophisticated in takers of media, but certainly people who try to look at things with a critical eye, you try to find anything unique or new about it. Do you think he accomplished that in any way, shape or form? Did he bring anything new to the table? Um, I think the main thing that he brought forward were visuals, which I always said he's, his visuals are great. I sure. mean, um, it looks interesting. Although, the lack of color is always frustrating with his movies. There's just, it just feels very brown and gray. <laughs> brown. Hmm, the brown, the, the ch- this could be rebel moon, the child of Brown. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. I mean, and it, I, this movie is about two hours yeah, long, but two, it's part two, one yeah, of two. two. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably 25% of this movie is slow motion. Oh. If you like that, but it got to be tiresome. It was, it was, Hey, look at this right. versus, 
it's not used in a really meaningful way any yeah. longer. It just felt like that's in my toolbox. Yeah. Like JJ yeah. with lens yeah, flare. Right. And um, there was no force user. So at least there wasn't that was like used, but there stuff, was right. a Jedi that essentially was using lightsabers. Right. Um, there was, you know, a rap scallion who was a pilot. There was a, now there was a bunch of different people that kind of felt like they had the same role. Like there was yeah. a, a general that was disgraced who finally came back. Right. You know, you had, I mean, you had some name actors. You had, you know, Charlie Hunnam in this with a ridiculous, Screen. ridiculous Irish accent. Ed Screen was the baddie just, you mm-hmm. know, and, and the whole last 15 minutes is this really drawn out punch up between Ed Screen and, and the, uh, Sophia Butella, who played the female lead. Um, and it just, it just really seemed to just drag on. I mean, you know, and again, very well choreographed. That's what he does. He's very visual, but it just felt like sucker punch <laughs> just dragging and dragging and oh so yeah at it the end yeah it, it didn't yeah. nothing blew me away nothing was right. like oh wow i couldn't believe they did that yeah well I, I and i i guess you know again so much of this is about managing expectations i don't know that i would expect to see that in something that got dumped to netflix that it would be like oh because if something if it was really so incredible wouldn't it be on the big screen? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know necessarily know all the details of how this came to pass, but uh, very missable to me. And again, very much on par and on brand for the way he does things. Now he has, as we all know, very ardent fans, the the Snyder Bros, and I'm sure the clamoring for that for a longer version of this exists. I'm sure when we get the second part, which is happening in April, that uh, there will be demand for a put together five hour version, which turns into seven hours of more and more and more. Yeah, I just didn't. It just that you're right. It didn't blow my skirt up. I'm I'm in your camp on this one. Yeah, it was derivative of so many different things. None of the characters, I felt like they, they kept on introducing characters, and I never really got a really reason to care for them. Yeah. The dialogue wasn't, you know, like, oh, that was a really great conversation. Yeah, very I mean, iffy. Yeah, great yeah, dialogue. We're introduced, yeah, we're introduced to this uh, robot at the beginning of the film, voiced by Anthony Hopkins, which I'm like, oh, let's do something with that. We literally saw him show up in two scenes right. and that was it yep we got him we got him for 15 minutes at the beginning and then he was the ca- he was the button at the end of, of the last scene that's it yeah and and deaths occurred and i never felt like oh wow i can't get over that death or yeah. so yeah i didn't riveting. see it i didn't see it coming that was a shocker yeah yeah and when they and then and not i mean i i a certain villain was brought back and i'm like yep that makes sense yep. that's happening yeah so, exactly I didn't say, oh, no, how would he survive that? I'm like, yeah, oh, really? He survived yeah. that? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You were yeah. like, you were, instead of, oh, you were like, oh. So, yeah, this was, uh, exactly. this was two pitches of the, oh, 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 oh. So, yeah. I have go. the higher ground, Obi-Wan. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Bananakin Skywalker. Oh, my yeah. gosh. All right. And then to wrap it up, now we're going to keep this very light. Because you are uh, six episodes into eight of these? Or, I've were you seen that all, yeah, I was looking at the, so like I've seen all but uh, eight and nine. Oh, okay. Oh, there's nine. Okay. Um, yeah, so What If dropped on, was it Christmas Day? I think. Uh, over on Disney Plus. But they did, I feel like this was something new. They released an episode daily. Uh, the 22nd. For, yeah, for nine days. Um, and I was absolutely in love with this season of What If. I enjoyed the original. Um, going, you know, and, and the What If is set within the parlance of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, obviously making it more palatable to the masses. Because if it was designed for people like me, nobody would like it because it's like, oh boy, it's a bunch of comic book stuff, whatever. But it's, you know, little twists and turns, all narrated by the Watcher, voiced by Jeffrey Wright, about what if this thing happened and this thing happened. And then in both seasons you know you could see that they're they're building to some kind of connectivity and i went back and watched a few episodes from season one as well um but i love this i mean we've known we've known about some of the cool stuff like they gave us an original character with kahori who was a native american character uh that was a great episode uh todd what were some of your favorites that you've watched so far you know i really loved episode three and that was what if happy hogan saved christmas that was die hard Good stuff. And that That's one fun. was so good. It was yeah. so fun. It was kind of like, this is what I wanted from what if like these kind of like odd stories with happy Hogan, who kind of never really got the spotlight and he did right. get the spotlight in this. 
Right. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, I really liked the Hella episode because yeah. once again, that was a that was a villain that you know I liked, and it was seeing their side of a villain in a different take on the story of two villains actually right which i really enjoyed i like that too yeah I, I really liked the pivot on some of those i found a couple not great like i found the first episode yeah. of nebula yeah it's very flat. boring i felt like this just felt like it added nothing to it and right it's like, oh, well and it doesn't okay. and, you know and it doesn't it's not really something that that endures where where you know that that and, and you've seen from the promos that Peggy Carter's character comes back and then that kind of drives us to the finale, which you'll see when you watch those last two. Uh, and my wife is an enormous fan of the Captain Carter character. She cosplays Captain Carter, got Captain Carter merch and stuff all over the house. So that was very exciting. Uh, watching it together, that was very exciting. And did you get to the 1602 episode? Because I, I mean, I no, oh, no, okay. I oh, that's the next one. just I, I fell that's, asleep. That's yeah, that's the uh, next uh, one. So it's 1602 yeah. and then there's a finale. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but yeah. this is fun. And again, I enjoyed the dropping it out over nine days because it, it again it gave you something to be very excited about um but mm-hmm. it didn't you didn't sit and just binge the whole dang thing if you were a, you know a daily viewer so yeah so i was i was very enthusiastic about that and then as we you know we already talked about season three is happening we don't know when thinking that it'll be probably this time next year is my my overall feeling but uh cool good any other thoughts um I am glad with what they're doing. I know this isn't going to be like giving us non MCU stories, but yeah, I hope they do more of these one offs that are kind of like, oh, we didn't touch on that at all. Let's do right. this and have fun with it. And like it, the fact that now yeah. we're we're getting like that. Uh, essentially, we're getting an Avengers team from the eighties. Yeah, yeah, I like that, that too. That was great. Yeah, and and again, it's more characters in the toolkit that they can bring out in other ways and other stuff on down the road. So, uh, well, because we've talked so long and because we we collaborated on almost all of these, uh, I will touch on reading an actual comic. Now, I've known that this was coming um, because everybody knows I'm a very big GI Joe guy. Uh, GI Joe has finally returned to comics after being gone for over a year. There is a core title which picks up the main thrust of you know Larry Hamas storyline that's been going on since 1982 but there are two new comics that are written by uh different writers set in this now shared void rivals transformers uh and gi joe energon universe and this was uh portraying the character of duke who is the top sergeant in gi joe he's been a character since uh the original animated miniseries in 1983 um but this uh was a modern reboot uh, where Duke uh, is essentially kind of like a Jack Reacher-esque kind of character, but he's a massive screw up. I mean, he, you know, in the first couple of pages, you see here's his career. He's saving people. He's doing stuff. And then flash forward to the present, he's sitting, looking disheveled, sitting in a chair in Hawk's office. Uh, you know, kind of getting the what for? Like we need you back. And Duke's like, I don't want to come back. And blah, 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 blah. and he says because Duke left because he witnessed one of the Transformers in action, killing a guy, and nobody will believe him. Um, So the story then very quickly turns into a very, you know, Jack Bauer, Jack Reacher 24 kind of situation where he's working on a cover-up. You get a familiar name uh, in Adele Burkhart, who was the Lady Doomsday, who they rescued in the very first issue of G.I. Joe. But again, it's told in modern parlance, so it's character and name only. Um, But I loved it. Uh, Again, the art, you know, you know, I'm a little fussy about art. I like people that look like people. Uh, I don't necessarily think this did an amazing job of that, but the story, it was, I read it over lunch earlier this week. Uh, I, I stayed after I finished eating just to finish this. Cause I was, it was, it was, it was intense. I loved it. Um, so well, yeah, great to hear. yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's rare that a comic comes along and bites me. I do like a lot of licensed stuff. Uh, and I do like very traditional, um, very traditional Spider-Man, Marvel, whatever it is. Um, but a new take on an old character, usually you're like, oh, God, this could be a total cluster. This was great. So I'd write, Tata, you know what? It's it's over on my Kindle. I would say check it out. I think you might enjoy oh, it, good. Too. I can buy some things at the same time. Oh, there you go. Please, yes. Mm. <laughs> product placement. <laughs> product shopping. placement. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, anyway. very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome to hear. I because I I really enjoyed the Transformers. Yeah, it's all linking together, and I'm I'm really excited to see where all this goes. So, yeah, uh, very very cool. So we'll talk about that actually in our previews of yes. 2024. Charlie. I know the next book is coming up. We'll talk about it in a minute. But anyway, with that, it is time to get out of this skeevy geek easy. I'm not paying for my drink this time because I saw a guy hawk a booger into it, and I'm not down with that. But I got to get out that air quantum. I have time to get down to the land down under. Hologram Tina 
and the mutants are waiting for us to talk about 2024. Let's do it. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome! Thank you, Tina. The mutants have been gathered for a topic or game to be entertained. And this week, we're doing a 2024 preview in comics, TV, and movies. This is all that we know of at the time. <laughs> um, and things are always TBD. They could change based on anything happening. We're, we're going to get some surprises. We know that, especially with the Super Bowl in about five weeks from right. now, that yes. we will get, uh, you know, ads for movies, trailers for things we don't know about. Right. And also, um, you know, We'll get, you know, conventions will have new new information coming out. So with that, uh, we'll start with comics, Charlie. So I pruned through all of the snip, snip, information snip. out there and try to find some uh, surprises in the world of comics that are coming as far as we know. So the first one's from Dark Horse, and this is interesting. Very much Bakuru so. Bakuru Banzai against the World Crime League et al., semi or col, uh, colon, a compendium of evils. Well, I will, so, I will tell you tidbit and maybe this is already in the frame mm -hmm. that uh i watched that movie this fall just because you know you know when i travel i have my little travel roku i'm like i want to watch mm -hmm. weird movies so i'll watch a weird movie and i and i picked this one up it was like five bucks because i always loved it as a kid at the very end of it after they do their weird little musical interlude where they're walking around the dry la river yep. basin they say and buck rubans i will return uh in against the world crime league so this is from 1984 this uh this title so well, it's a sequel that yeah. never happened, so we're right. getting it in comic book form. I love I thought, it. This is cool. I, yeah. yeah, I want. I want to read this. Does it say when it's coming out? Uh, I'd have to look. I think it's uh, the first quarter of the year. Okay. So by March, it should be out. Yeah, I'm. I'm in. Um, Count me in. Yeah. So DC, you know, DC was kind of a quiet. I mean, this was a big year for them. The dawn of DC. They relaunched a lot of their comic books. This is kind of like their 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 new status quo, where things a little bit brighter, not so dark and dreary with a billion crises. So um, they have been launching some very successful titles, which is cool. I need to catch up. I heard Superman is awesome. The new take on that. So uh, more to come. But one of the titles that stood out to me, which is new, it's called Sinister Sons. So this is kind of taking off of where we got the Batman, uh, which was be John. Uh, Junior or, or uh, Cal's son, yeah. uh, John, and then we also had uh, Damien timing up, teaming up. Well, now we've got this book where it's teaming up the son of Sinestro and the son of uh, Zod. What? Oh, crap. Yeah. That I'm like, that's kind of cool. So yeah. it's called Sinister Sons. So that's kind of neat that that's happening. Um, and I'll be curious to check that out because we haven't had that before. Yeah. Nice. So very cool. Good deal. Yeah. Uh, then IDW is is dropping one of their most successful licensed titles, the 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 uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They did a, uh, a book a couple of years ago called The Last Ronin, which was very cool. It was like, uh, yeah. Charlie, had, it was basically like, almost like uh, Days of Future Past or something like, basically in the far future. And it was uh, Jump Forward and you didn't exactly know what was going on. Mm. And a uh, highly successful book. Oh, I nice. really enjoyed it. I did an episode of... Um, of spinner rack with a few folks who'd read that yeah, yeah, yeah. that we did that uh, last year. So they have lost Ronin two, which is coming out because it did leave some, some, some dangling plot threads where they going. So I think this is kind of cool that it's going to be ongoing storylines, but it's coming out and I know this will be very, very big. Excellent. Good deal. And image comics. And this drops, at the end of January, uh, is go spinning off of what I was just talking about in the last segment about Duke. Now, Cobra Commander is getting his first ever solo title. So you have a villain driving the bus. Uh, it's within the Energon universe, so it's going to be a new creative team uh, set in modern time, I'm assuming, uh, that's going to circle back around again. So uh, Cobra Commander... We, uh, it, it, the way he's portrayed in the co in the comics versus the cartoon series, both two very different characters. In the comics, he was always a traditional, um, you know, disenchanted guy who basically formed an Amway-like organization that became an international terrorist group. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then in in the cartoons, he was a you know many thousand year old snake guy scientist who uh, ate a face of spores and then was sent out into the world to raise an army. Uh, so. Two characters didn't have anything in common, so I will be kind of curious how they how they integrate probably the cartoon persona more into because th there was a couple of preview pages in in the regular GI Joe Larry Hama comic that I feel like they they teased this a little bit, and if I remember correctly, might have been a little bit more of the bent towards the cartoon bit of it. So I'm looking forward to it. <clears throat> 
Very cool. Um, then Marvel, uh, we're getting a lot of events that they've already kind of called out. Uh, I yeah. think I might have mentioned before, but it's yeah, the Ultimate so. Universe is returning with a Spider-Man book, X-Men in a Black Panther book. Um, Fair, yeah, I don't know. Bla- Black Panther wasn't uh, when the, the Ultimate Universe really launched back in the year 2000. Black Panther was very niche. Uh, and then, you know, yeah. five years, obviously, after the massive success of the film, uh, clearly that has kicked you know, the Avengers out of the spotlight. There was a fantastic four book back then, um, but they've really drilled it down. So are these permanent returns or is this, is this part of an event or it depends on how well it sells? That's a great question. Obviously this is a different ultimate Spider-Man than we -hmm. got, which we got miles Morales from. It's Mm -hmm, going to be a different X-Men than we got. And then the black Panther, same thing. So I'll be curious to see where this goes. If it's something that's lauded or if it's just maybe like 2099 or or the new universe where it just they try again and maybe you can't go back right exactly yep 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 the blood hunt event that is going to be basically the marvel universe versus vampires which could be fun yes yeah we talked yep. about that all right and then x-men 97 we get that 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 the cartoon comes out in like two weeks no, it comes. Is it? Out. Yeah, it's on. I put it on my calendar. Yeah, it's got an official date. I don't know if I've seen it. Offic- they haven't put out a trailer yet for it. It's crazy. I don't know, but I definitely yeah. saw a launch time. But uh, yeah, if they're going to launch a prequel comic, it better come out like you know tomorrow this week. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to be behind it. Um, but uh, yeah, that. Be- so the the yeah, X- that- the, the X Men ninety seven is, is obviously that spins off of the classic cartoon, but it's five years later, I assume. So yeah, things that move forward looks like are we having a lot of the same characters? I would assume, or will we have you know different X Men or things will grow in a different direction? Yeah, you know that makes me think. I should probably just watch like the last season yeah, of the X Men cartoon me to remember how it ended, so then I can figure oh. out like, okay, what are the dangling threads? This comic is basically just trying to like fill in those spaces of oh, what okay. happened. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I will admit that uh, you know I dabbled with that X Men cartoon, but I know like for my friend Derek, who is my figure collecting partner, that cartoon was everything for him because he's about ten years younger than us, um, or just about, maybe five or ten years younger than us. So yeah, I didn't. Very- to watch yeah. every episode because it was on Fox Kids Saturday. I was a junior when it, right. when it debuted. Right. And I'm like, okay. And I know I didn't record it to watch them all. So I know I miss out on quite a bit, but yeah. it was the best thing we could have hoped for at the time. Right. <laughs> and now it's, you know, it, it, it lives on, on Disney plus I'm assuming. So yeah, I would be, you know, I would be with you about watching that. And I know speaking of the X-Men being our only MCU film that we're getting this year that we were planning to do a little bit of X-Men as far as talking yeah. about the film. So I would not be opposed to picking a handful of episodes of X-Men 92 and, and watching them and breaking them down. I think that'd be interesting. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Avengers Twilight. This is kind of like a future, like kind of like the last Avengers story kind of oh, thing gotcha. where the Avengers in the future have been disbanded. I think Steve Rogers is trying to put the team back together. So this one could be good. Okay. I, I like those type of books. Gotcha. So it's, it's probably, I think it's a one-off. I don't think, I think it's just okay. a standalone story, which would be good. Gotcha. You um, know, it was, it was the funniest thing in the world. I get one of those emails that say, come back and subscribe to our books and get 50% off. I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm kind of curious. So I bring up all the titles. They have all these titles. It's like, yeah, uh, you regulars price $60 dollars a year, thirty dollars uh, for you, and I'm like, I get my, you know, I pay a hundred dollars a year for the Marvel Unlimited, and that gets me the special kit, which I only really do for the figure, which I really shouldn't even do because I just turn around and sell it. But and, but the other stuff is like, and there's these discounts, whatever. It's just like everything ends up there anyway. And I know this is a, sorry, I know it's the death of the industry, but comics are just, it's just really tough to picking up a five dollar comic book you know what i mean yeah the i think trades and uh subscriptions of the future yeah uh, the, the the weeklies are hard to pull off for most yeah, people that's tough stuff yeah. so yeah. um but anyway yeah so the house of x uh powers of x rise of x whatever it is you've read some of that correct but that's your next your next item so here. this is kind of like the epilogue uh the um bookend to the whole krakoa uh, you know, saga, it's ending. They're going to be doing a new uh, kind of status quo of X-Men, which is always the way the X-Men goes. They do like certain yeah. eras. And so this is kind of the ending of it. So this is going to be the uh, the end of that. And they're going to wrap it up and we're going to see a new debut in 2024. So I'm excited. I will probably try to see where this is going. Like I read the original yeah. like House of X, Powers of X. Yeah. I will probably read these just to see where we're going next because 
it's been kind of way too much <laughs> and i'm yeah. so out of source with it i'm like uh, I, I just need to know what's happening right. in, a, in a yeah. good summary and see where they're going next um but yeah, yeah right. we'll see where this goes as we get a new status quo and then we're getting a new ghost rider so this is like a new ghost rider number one it sounds like it's going to be a new one versus the um different incarnations we've had of ghost rider which have been like johnny blaze or uh there was another one uh uh we're big Ghost Help Riders me, Charlie. fans. Uh, was it uh, was it the kid the, like from Agents of Shield? There was the the the, the Latinx kid. What was his name? Ed. Oh, it's not Edward. Yeah, oh, he's sorry. the most newest one too. Yeah. So I, I I mean I can't remember his name. And and, was and he was gonna, he was an Avenger. Yeah. He had a car instead of a bike. Yep. Yeah. Damn it. What was his name? But anyway, he was Ghost Rider. But he yeah. was Avengers. Was it, the last time I was, was reading the book on a regular basis, when yep. they they live inside a hollowed out celestial in the Antarctic, that's Avengers Mansion. Yeah, and he had the he had the Camaro that was on fire. That was cool. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. So, so uh, that's coming. So we're going to get another version of the, the Ghost Rider, which is kind of like the Ghost Rider. Anybody can become the Spirit of Vengeance. So that falls fully in line with, right. with uh, that Anybody character. can. It's so like, I'm it's, cool with it. It's the opposite of being a Green Lantern. Um, no, if it, was, it is the Ghost Rider, that would be Oh, cool. get her out of the wheelchair if she happens to be in a wheelchair. Exactly. All right. So moving on to television. And boy, is TV and movies both going to be a little weird in 2024. I remember when the strike was going on, I was having lunch with my dad. And I'm like, Dad, you know they're on strike right now, so you can have lots of time to watch all the shows that you never watched in your entire life because there's not going to be anything new on. But fortunately the strike is over we've got some new stuff coming up and there was already some some stuff in the can so you want to go onesie twosie here yeah all right absolutely all so right take the first one Charles. yeah yeah you got it well the first one is and this is just a couple of weeks from now is echo uh over on disney plus this is spinning off of uh this marvel's for, uh, the first of their spotlight collection this is spinning off of a character that came from hawkeye which i watched when i had covid i was in bed with the tv and i was re-watching old disney plus marvel shows and so this was uh this was one that i watched so um all five episodes dropped at once on january nine which is not the norm for them if i'm not mistaken they usually they usually parcel no. stuff out but we talked about the fact that well maybe this is terrible <laughs> that's why they're dumping it all at once but i guess we'll find out but the trailers that we've seen for it shows this to be extremely adult very r-rated lots of bloody violence so uh if that's your scene it's ma yeah and yeah. they're even calling it out in the ads for it so yeah. it'll be on hulu and disney plus exactly. but you do have to use the uh I, I believe if you have it set up for disney plus to be uh, age gated yeah uh, your kids will not be able to see this. That's a good thing. So, all right, what's next? So there's this animated show called Has Been Hotel, which is very looks looks very uh, colorful and fun. It's by yeah. A24. It's going to be on Prime Video, and it's essentially a, um, a a musical about the Queen of Hell who is trying to clean up hell and make space in the hotel. That's why it's called the Has Been. So yeah. Has Been. Uh, so basically. Uh, they basically have to solve their overpopulation problem and it's a musical as well. Um, nobody you would really know is in this, but Oh, Keith David, of course, oh, is in this because uh, his voice, Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie Beatrice from, uh, uh, oh. Brooklyn nine, nine. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's some names. This could be a lot of fun. Um, I like, I said, I like to watch lighter fare at night to help me fall asleep. So yep. has been hotel. I might be in on this. Gotcha. Very good. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is going to be on Prime Video, uh, spinning off of the 2005 film, which gave us Brangelina. Uh, star is Donald Glover, and the female lead was Phoebe Waller-Bridge, but she left. And who is the who is the female? Francesca Sloan. Fran uh, no, it says that she's the director. Uh, Maya Erskine. Is oh. the is the that you see the picture go. here? So there you go. Mm. Um, all right, Todd. This next show, I never made it anywhere with it. Have you watched this much? Oh, Abbott Elementary, very fun, very cute. I like it. It's very much in that wheelhouse of like the Goldbergs. This is yeah. a modern elementary school. The characters are fun. Also kind of like modern family. So if you like those yeah. type of shows, Blackish, it's very much in that wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, I watched the first four or five, but it wasn't yeah. because I didn't enjoy it. It was because I just, oh, I should watch that with Chris and yeah. we should probably get back to this because I, I miss a show like that, like Superstore. Well, I, yeah, I don't like, have like, a show right now. Yeah, regular old sitcom, 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 sitcom. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. All right. And uh, Ty, you can have the next one too, because this one's not sure. my house. Yeah. 
<laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender. This is a live action series um, coming in February 22nd to Netflix. Um, everything I've seen about this so far makes me forget about the horrible movie from Shyamalama Ding Dong. Shyamalama Ding. I'm excited. The cast looks fantastic. I am hopefully uh, hoping it's very good. Uh, and the um, unfortunately, the creators of this of the original animated film are not involved in this, which always makes me feel weird. But yeah. you know, ultimately, it doesn't mean it's not going to be successful. That's true. Um, or, or, or good in general, because things... that's, that's the barometer of success is if it's any good. Yeah, so we've seen <laughs> things where the creators have been involved in them and it's been horrible. So, right. you know, it, it, if it's got the right tone and it works, right. I'm excited. I will definitely check this out. Netflix is on a hot streak for their adaptations lately. Yeah. I started watching that One Piece show, Charlie. Chris and I were just addicted to it. Oh, wow. It's so nice. lighter fare. It's fun. It's original. I really like it. So uh, I cannot wait uh, for this in February. All right. And, and in February, we're also getting Shogun, uh, which is an adaptation of a novel from 1975 by the same name from James Clavel. Uh, story following a uh, gentleman who ends up shipwrecked in feudal Japan and entangled between a lord and his powerful daimyo, the Lady Mariko. So, um, I'm assuming a lot of uh, a lot of punch ups, a lot of sword work. Um, I, I assume. Yeah. Uh, remember the the mini series that came out like the 80s. This is not the first time this is out. It was. Um, I'm trying to remember the actor's name. He's got a beard. Um, Played a doctor. Uh, his name is oh Richard Chamberlain. Oh, played, there you uh, go. The main lead in this, yeah, uh, from 1980s. So this oh, is an nice. opportunity probably to get a little bit more faithful. Probably a better budget. Very good. All right. Well, this next one is all you because again, this show and the comic, I just it didn't necessarily click with me, but I know that it's Ooh. beloved. Huh. Shame on you, Charlie. No, just kidding. Uh, I get it. Um, I love this show, Invincible Season Two, Part Two. I loved Season to part one right. and i'm like oh they're splitting in a half oh darn now i have to wait so it says early 2024 don't know they just but wanna, the show always ends like, keep you on the hook <clears throat> exactly and and the, the the first part ended on a big cliffhanger mm -hmm. so i am excited to see where it goes it's close to the comic but i'm not a one for one which is nice so i don't feel like if i'm not complete to the comic i'm gonna miss something or vice versa yeah good deal and i'm excited for this todd we, we talked about this trailer when it dropped maybe the last month but fallout which is a classic video game my son really loved it when he was a teenager um but we're getting you know an adaptation of a beloved video game uh yellow jackets alum ella purnell and todd did you ever get through yellow jackets very surreal well, i show. don't i i I've, I've heard it's good very good yeah it's so, very yeah. surreal but anyway yeah she is uh playing a character named lucy in post-apocalyptic los angeles Angeles and you know nuclear devastation drives people uh, above ground but there's uh, underground but they're like what's happening up on the sur uh, up on the service and as we saw in the trailer you know it's a kind of a uh, menagerie of you know a post apocalyptic mutants and you know like you know all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so this this looks like fun. Uh, the other video game adaptation that I enjoyed that I know that is not beloved is Halo. Um, but that's very serious. This appears to be somewhat satirical, or at least it, it just kind of looks that way. Yeah, uh, I think everyone will find something to enjoy about it because it yeah. does, it definitely is not doesn't take itself too seriously. It's got some cool story beats. It's fun. Uh, there's a uh, you know it's all about the, from the lens of someone who comes out of a vault and right. how does the world changed and the cast looks good and the world looks very cool. Right. Oh, okay. Now we have our last some uh, somewhat confirmed thing coming out. Take it away. Yeah, The House of the Dragon season two. It's been two years since we had the first <laughs> season, and that was a yeah, that was a um, a, a summer drop, and yep. people were very nervous about that show. They were like, "Oh, there's fatigue for Game of Thrones." And because the way it ended, like we were yeah. very wrong. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. were very wrong. And it, yeah, and it was originally it was it was spinning off the universe, not any characters per se. And it was and, and it was a huge success. I mean, I every prequel, everybody loved it. Yeah, and it was yeah, it was a prequel going back. So the same kind of thing that we really want Star Wars to do. Uh, that hopefully they will be doing with the Alkalite, you know, going back. So and great actors, obviously Matt Smith, Olivia Cook, Emma Darcy, um, and then yeah, the, the this uh, 
it, it, serious cliffhanger to end this uh, that was like, whoops, that should, <laughs> that was, that's probably not going to be good. Um, but I loved it. it. Yeah. And again, you know, this is, this isn't always my cup of tea. Um, but I, I, we were glued to this. It's, you know, it's that, it's that 9 PM Sunday night max slot where they, they stick those, those shows uh, like that. So, yeah. So summer, um, but that's the last thing that we have that anybody has a date attached to. Uh, the rest of it is just like would be nice. Oh, and they did, it didn't yeah. inc- didn't include Star Trek Discovery, which will be uh, coming out with its fifth and final season in April. So there you go. Yeah. Well, we do know we don't have dates, but we do know we're getting some things. They just haven't given us dates yet. Lord of the Rings: Ring of Power. That was a show they continued to. Um, produced because it was done overseas so that'll Mm -hmm. be coming back right uh spider chronicles that one surprised me because apparently it's finished yeah it was supposed to be on disney yeah now it was bought by roku so that's roku could put it up whenever yeah Yeah, acolyte like you mentioned skeleton crew yep star wars star wars scheduled those are the only i think and I didn't know Bad Batch was getting a fourth season or third yeah, season. Thir- yeah, yeah, no, I, we knew. I mean that that okay. ended. That ended oh, on, I didn't know. I mean that ended on a cliffhanger. It would be really shitty if it didn't. But oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, good time. to know. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, and then we are getting apparently um some some Marvel shows. Yeah, Agatha Coven of Chaos. Uh, multiple different names. It's been called. Right, will be coming out next year. X Men ninety seven. Your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. They changed the name of that from freshman year to your friendly neighborhood yeah. Spider Man. So that's supposed right. to be coming out. And then Marvel Zombies, Charlie. I haven't heard anything about that show. No, you now you didn't mention, even though I gave you a date that X Men ninety seven is supposed to be out in January, but that's not what the, I don't know how old this article is, or maybe what I read just isn't correct. Um, but yeah, yeah, I we've not gotten anything more uh about this. Uh, Spider Man. Yeah, it even says freshman year in the art. <laughs> yep. But yeah, Marvel Zombies. No, no clue. Um, and this Creature Commandos coming out. I'm, isn't this the one of Zack Snyder? Oh no, uh, James Gunn's new. It's like, the first yeah, thing. Yeah, the first, it's the thing, first yeah. thing is part of the Gods and Monsters. So this will be a 2024. Wow. Um, yeah, release. It'll be it'll be kind of interesting. It's animated, so I mean, it's supposed to be canon yeah. with the new DCU. So. But it's probably going to be wacky and weird. So wacky why not? And weird sounds great. And then we've got uh, some bang bang bangs from DC: Suicide Squad plus Harley season five. There's a oh, I guess there's already a Superman show out. My Adventures with Superman. I guess I've yeah, not seen that. Okay, it's cute. It's fun. Yeah. It's like a young Superman with with you know the people doing adventures. So yeah. it's actually very classic, which I think is good. Oh, my son cool. liked it, and we liked nice. it. Nice. Yeah. Uh, the Penguin spinning off from the Batman with uh, with Rob Rob Bat Bat and Bat is coming out. Alien on Hulu. Um, How's that gonna work? Yeah, I, I I don't you know I mean they do it turns into Terminator right like oh we've got it in the, I mean anywhere they can slap the you know oh let's see yeah oh. Noah Hawley and Timothy Oliphant wow holy cow yeah Noah Hawley's a, a pretty prolific creator he does some good stuff I think he did um, didn't he do Legion I think so that sounds familiar okay. uh, interview with Vampire ongoing I haven't watched it Chucky will not die part two of no. season three. Uh, and then the boys season four. Uh, sure. <laughs> I will believe it when yep. we see it. Uh, Umbrella Academy. I, I, I've never gone back to that. I know that it, things got pretty crazy uh, yep. with that. And then um, stuff and, and then looking out far beyond who knows what unknowns. Yeah. Witcher peacemaker last of us. Welcome to dairy, which I assume is a spinoff of it. Uh, another season of The Mandalorian, which I've not heard anything about being confirmed. And uh, we know that Andor Season 2 is definitely going to be in 2025, which sucks. Yes. But yes. That yeah. is, that's where it's at. That is it for TV. So hopefully something you like was on this list or hopefully will be announced uh, that we'll get to watch. Right? Uh, because, Charlie, you right, know, right. it's not like the old days where TV Guide, you get the previews. And you're like, oh, TV Guide, <laughs> I'm going to highlight everything I want to watch. <laughs> what was that? Was that an episode of, uh, oh, that was the deal with uh, with George's dad on Seinfeld with the TV Guide. Yes. And then Homer Simpson loved TV Guide. The three R's of TV Guide, reading TV Guide writing to tv guide and renewing tv guide <laughs> what was it cheers and jeers oh no i've been jeered <laughs> yes are we hot no we are not oh my gosh all right well no, for it's our like the bullseye with uh entertainment weekly right oh my god remember the bullseye Entertain- at the back of entertainment weekly Entertain- entertainment weekly doesn't exist anymore does it it's like gone gone Did it i go think out, they it? do like just specialty magazines now oh my god it's yeah. so crazy I think it's just anyway a website now uh, yeah 
No, oh my God, what isn't? Well, moving on to talking about movies, uh, there's a few here, but there's a few that uh, are going to be in 2025, <laughs> thanks to the very rightfully earned writer strike, which again we're very very happy about. So glad those people get what yes. they need. Um, but I've been seeing I've been seeing lots of ads on my Instagram and on my TikTok for Mean Girls, which comes out January 12. Uh, not exactly a remake of the f- iconic film, which is now from 20 years ago. 20 years ago, the, the Tina Fey classic. Uh, but we're getting, I, I, I believe that uh, she's writing the new film. And I know she's in it because I uh, end up seeing uh, seeing her in some of these ads. She's like the principal, I think, in this one. Yeah. And it's a yeah, musical. There you go. And it's a musical, so it's right up Todd's alley. Which they haven't I shown any it. musical bits of it either, so it's very odd. Yeah. They're kind of, they're kind of holding it close to the vest. Um next yeah. you have a is it a, is it Argyle? What the hell is the name of this movie? Argyle? Argyle. Argyle. This is the movie that seems like the it's About like a the, sock. The, the the author. <laughs> no, the author uh played by um oh what's her name? Uh Dallas Brace Howard where she's an author and everything oh, she writes right, about right. is true. I so love it's it. got the spies and yeah. it looks very yeah. cute. Yeah, Cavill, John Cena, Dua Lipa. Yeah. My 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 secret love, Dua Lipa. Ooh, it's not a secret anymore. Whoops, sorry. And Samuel Jackson, because there's not a film in existence that he's not in. Nope. Um, we have what will be the most important film of the year, uh, because uh, Todd and I are getting a cut because of Madam Web. Uh, that would be her film, That's which right. comes out on Valentine's Day. Uh, now you got Dakota Johnson as the titular character, but she forms a super squad uh, featuring notable faces like Is- Isabella Merced, Celeste O'Connor, and the very comely Sydney Sweeney. <sighs> but uh, yeah, we, this is the first of three films that we get in 2024. That's the Spider Verse with no Spider Man. Alive the, and well. The Spumco lives. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll see it, but uh, frankly, of the three, you know, one, one is it a Venom film. The other one is the Craven film. Th- this looks like the winner. I don't know if you can really quantify that it's a winner. Charlie, uh, if you've got three, yeah, there's always a winner when there's a loser. We all lose, uh, right. when these if, movies come out. If you, if you, if you're not first or last, we got a Bob Marley biopic coming up same day. And then we're on to Dune. Part two of yes. is it part two of part one? Um, definitely no, need to rewatch two of, this uh, the, of two. Yeah, definitely because the original came out during COVID, so we watched it at home. If I'm not mistaken, or it was like I saw slightly it hybridized. I saw oh, okay, it. I definitely saw it at home, so I will watch it again and then dig into this. So yeah, because the original uh, Dune film 2021, was, so it was yeah. uh, 2021. So it came yeah. out in October of 2021. Oh, okay. So that was past the, the real lockdown part of COVID. Correct. Um, but anyway, this is uh, – so because the original film from the 80s was really supposed to be part one of two or part part one of multi-parts because the whole story it was condensed. Told. Yeah. Yeah. Where this is this is expanding out. But you have the the gorgeous T- Timothy Chalamet uh, joined by, again, a cast of millions. You got you know, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bardem, uh, Josh Brolin, uh, Stalin Skarsgård, Dave Bautista. It's like they jammed all the Marvel people in this as they possibly could. Um, um, yes. But joined by joined by the even more gorgeous Austin Butler, Christopher Walken, Florence Pugh, Leia Sidhu, and the last one I'm not even going to try. But you've got a cast. Gazella of- Yacoub. Thank you very much. you got a cast of gazillions in a movie that will probably be four hours long. But I'm in. I'm in. And we'll. Uh, we'll, we'll I'm in it. too. We'll have a chat about it. another Kung Fu Panda movie. And then we're into Ghostbusters. The Frozen Empire. That movie, uh, the 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 return of it came out. Was it uh, holidays of twenty one? I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah, Th- uh, yeah, yeah. It was Thanksgiving, uh, twenty twenty one. Yeah, I enjoyed it very much because uh, you got the uh, up and comer Mackenzie Grace was the uh, and then uh, Finn Wolfhard are the grandchildren of Egon Spengler, um, and they 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 busted some ghosts out in the heartland. Now they're back in New York City, uh, bringing. Um, Paul Rudd along, but we're reuniting with the the survivors of the original cast. Um, and I I've seen the trailers, and I think it looks fabulous. I'm excited. I like Ghostbusters. Yeah, I, I I hope it's. I mean, they've they've hit all the nostalgia pieces already, so now that's just got to yeah. stand on its own. Hopefully, right. they can do that. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. So uh, a, a, a movie that's kind of an unknown is called Mickey Seventeen. Yeah. Uh, this is March 29th. Robert Pattinson stars as space traveler Mickey Seventeen. Uh, Mickey is a disposable employee sent on a deadly mission to colonize the ice world Nephilim. 
That sounds oh, interesting. Mickey. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. Godzilla, X-Kong, the new empire. We talked about that pretty recently. Uh, and we're not even into summer yet. We've got the Civil War movie up next, which we've talked about. Uh, big, scary. Called, you know, uh, yeah, you're living it's it. It's a documentary, with, actually. Yeah, with Kristen Dunst and Jesse Plemons. Uh, um, still in April, Challengers. Uh, ro- uh, uh, romantic comedy first drama, skipped. The Fall Guy, which we've talked about. This is a, a comedy with Mr. Ryan Reynolds, Mr. Beautiful. Um, Ryan Gosling. Ryan, right? What did I say? Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, Ryan Reynolds. You said Ryan Reynolds. Yep. I bet. Daddy now Ryan we're into the summer. Ryan, yeah. Summer now we're into the summer season with If. Now this is Ryan Reynolds. It's If the Wish Fulfillment movie. Wish Fulfillment the movie. Uh, if is the one where it's uh, a girl can see imaginary creatures. Yeah, and there you so go. can Ryan Reynolds. Looks cute. And again, we're into the summer. Then we get Furiosa ho, 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 with our our shared girlfriend on it. Anya Taylor Joy. Love it. Yeah. Uh, another Garfield. Yeah. So movie. we've got three yeah. movies, Charlie. Yeah. So we got three movies, May 24th, where I feel like something's going to have to move because you can't have Furiosa, yeah. Garfield, yeah. and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes be on yeah. the same date. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and that's the third one's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes that we talked about. Uh, we have another Bad Boys film in June, Bad Boys 4. Are you serious? Wow. Well, uh, Bad Boys for Life was the last, it was the biggest film of 2020 because it was the last film that came out before the pandemic happened. Oh, that's and it was wild. huge. Yeah. We're getting uh, Inside yeah. Out 2, which is a sequel to that very successful film from a few years ago. Uh, another um, Miss po- Ballerina on June 7th, which is Whoops. a John Wick spinoff starring oh, uh, Anna de Armas. So that could be fun. Nice. Uh, another your, your boy Norman Reedus is in that one, Charlie. What? Oh, is that him? Is that him being cozy? Oh no, that's the bike rider. Sorry, we're skipping that one. Uh, new Quiet Place film. They're still staying quiet. Uh, this is the third one. Uh, still no, still no John Krasinski. He's still dead. Prequel, and it's yeah. not including uh, the previous cast. It's Lapita Nyong'o is starring in that. I will oh, skip that because I don't care what happened <laughs> as things you were bet. crap in the bed. Another Despicable Me movie. April will not go see those because she hates Minions. New version of Twister. Now, it's obviously not bringing back Bill Paxton because he's dead. But are we getting is Helen Hunt like, hey, I'm going right back out and chasing some. Uh, Doesn't really say who the cast is, but they're going to run around. uh, Glenn Powell is starring in that from, you know. Uh, so, but Twister, so there's two. Oh my God, two Twisters. Oh boy, and they're going to fight it out. Finally, our lone entry from the Marvel Cinematic Universe drops on July 26th, Deadpool 3, uh, which will, to me, kind of, uh, genre speaking, certainly in the superhero world, kind of be the event of the of the year so far, at least up to this point, in the superhero realm. It's later than I thought it would be, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, big, yeah, big time. Uh, what is the big July 4th film? It's Despicable Me. I mean, yeah, yeah, which I, I suppose that fits. Uh, b- oh, Borderlands. Now that's a video game adaptation. Eli Roth with uh, Kevin Hart, because he's in everything, if it's not Samuel J. L. Jackson. Jack Black, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and uh, Ariana G- Greenblatt, because she's in everything. Um, oh, before the end of the summer, we get Craven. Now, this is Aaron Taylor Johnson uh, as a extraordinarily violent version of Craven the Hunter, which, again, Spumco with no Spider-Man. But good he's a pick. good guy in this. Yeah, I, think he, I think he's, isn't he just a guy? I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, get Okay, so now we're out of the summer into September. Beetlejuice 2. And we've got a decent portion of the cast back, except for the, the <laughs> he who was canceled. Uh, but, but Jenna Ortega right. j- joins as a new face. Uh, moving on, we have the animated Transformers 1. Big, a big voice cast here, yeah? Yeah, and it's all animated. Uh, this will be the first time uh, on screen from a film perspective that uh, Peter Cullen will not be voicing Optimus oh. Prime. It will actually be Chris Hemsworth, but this is supposed to be from the early days where, oh, okay. um, you know, I guess that's okay. I'm fine. I'm w- fine with yeah. that. Peter Cullen can rest. He's 80 years old. Yeah, you got to retire at some point, or they just end up doing the Comic Con circuit and hopefully don't catch COVID. Uh, we have yet another Saw movie. This is Saw 11. Uh, but Tobin Bell. But it's another like, prequel, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. So they're going even backwards. I don't even know they can have Tobin Tobin Bell in them. They just keep making them younger. Uh, October now we have the Joker Folie Adieu with the awesome Lady Gaga uh, as 
the Harley Quinn, and it's an, it's a continuation of Todd Phillips' Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, the surreal Joker. Um, oh my! It's I the did only not DC film. It's the only oh, DC really? film in 2024, and it's not even tied to the DC EU. Oh, that's so. wild! Yeah. I had no idea there was going to be a sequel to Smile. This was the movie uh, with uh, Susie Bacon uh, back in uh, back a couple of years ago, um, and I thought she she died at the end of it. Sorry. So how are they bringing her back? She's she's going to be the smile. I never saw it. I I oh. don't know. I mean. Whoops, well, sorry for spoilers. The spoilers. <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, the Terrifier is another movie. And then we get into Venom. And we're, we're out of scary season, uh, even though it's scary that they're still making Venom movies. So, oh, boy, that last one just really didn't do it for me. Um, okay, November of 2022, a sequel to Gladiator? Didn't, didn't he die at the end of that? Sorry, spoilers from 20 years ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoops um so oh okay so he's so, uh, we're yeah, getting paul mescal serves as a grown version of lucius versus ver, verse two which is the nephew of joaquin phoenix who was the uh horrible emperor uh right. it's got denzel washington pedro pascal connie nielsen I mean, great cast and Ridley Scott's a good director. So he right. didn't come back to a franchise just be- to make money. Woody, it's not the Blart. It's not like the Blart, Blart film, right? <laughs> or the, any of the Fast and the Furious. Uh, moving further in November, we have part one of uh, assumed two of the Broadway musical Wicked uh, with uh, with Ariana Grande starring as Glenda the Good Witch. I know people who've loved should that musical. Good. I've not seen it. Yeah, should be good. And then we already yeah, talked uh, we about love the music. Yeah, yeah. We already talked about the Karate Kid, which comes out December 13. That is Mr. Macho with Mr. Chan, not knowing if we'll get other characters. Oh, ending the year with a whimper, not a bang. Uh Todd, did you see the live action Lion King? No, I, think I, I heard I, it was pretty much beat for beat. And- yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah. just zero interest. But oh, this is a surprise. A prequel, uh, a yeah. prequel of Mufa, like a prequel Lion King film. Yeah, exactly. Skip. Yeah, thank you. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog three. I don't believe I saw the second one, um, but I know I love the first one. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. a holiday season, and we're getting oh on Christmas Day. How apropos a Nosferatu with is that who is the female lead? That lo- oh Lily Rose Depp. Ooh, awesome. Know. Nice. Uh, another take on the classic 1922 film. How cool. And then, okay, then we get into it not yet dated, which is the uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse. So that that's be, definitely not coming out next year. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. And and I, I I thought I had heard 2025, but it came out. So so that's it. That's tw- that's our very piece together 2024. Um, yeah. Not knowing so, how things are going to evolve. Cri- yeah. So, Charlie, I'm not letting you get off the hook. So uh, I will say that uh, – one of our friends, John Sear, did say in the um, uh, oh, yeah. he was looking forward to in 2044. He said House Dragon season two, more Doctor Who, and mm-hmm. uh, he's hoping Cobra Kai season six drops in 2024. Yes, yeah, no uh, idea what the what yeah. the production life was on that. So yes, awesome. Um, so, okay, so uh, well, go ahead. What's touch guy? Prediction time, Charlie. Predictions. So. Need a prediction, Charlie, from you in the, about the world of TV. Now, not just a trend in TV, but a, something in TV that you predict will happen in regards to maybe a TV series or something like that. Same thing with movies. And then a trend you predict will be happening in the world of geek media. Well, I'll go backwards here. I think we all know the trend, and this is not a hot take because we've already talked about it, is that things will just continue to condense you know the pond is going to get smaller as the big fish have to eat the little fish or the fish merge together in some weird like telepod thing from the fly where the fish has three eyes or whatever it is um you know dollars are harder to come by um because there's less content and then there'll be potentially even less creative outlets for people to make content so i'm just think you're just going to see things continue to crunch down um you know in movies and tv you know at least there were a lot of uh, dates for things that were completed. Um, but it's very weird to me uh, to see a single DC entry and a single Marvel outside of the Spumco entry. Um, I feel like a lot of superhero fatigue might see less and less of those things on the slate for 2025. Makes me wonder if maybe, you know, like Westerns, they've, they peaked 
you know, because you remember back in the 50s and 60s, Westerns were unstoppable, TV, movies, and then it came a time that they died. And I, I'm wondering if with, you know, the, the big, big failures of the Marvels, uh, the not quite as big a failure of Aquaman 2, um, if maybe the, you know, the, some smell in the coffee, the writings on the wall, um, that we might start to tilt away from that. Um, in TV, uh, it, it's tougher still because how do you know what's popular when TV networks are just going to continue to erode and that's not where people are getting their content. So when things are streaming, how do they know what's popular? How do they know what to keep making? How do they capture those additional dollars? I've always been somewhat mystified by like, what makes a popular streaming show? How do they keep making, you know, stranger things and, and so, oh boy, you know, you realize stranger things wasn't on the docket for this year. Yep. Which, which to me is pretty surprising. Um, so I think I think TV will still continue to kind of be a mystery uh, as far as, you know, if everything becomes one and done. Hey, we've made one season of that. We don't think we canceled it before two episodes aired. Uh, I'm just not sure what will become the the barometer of success uh, for TV at this point, especially with, you know, empires collapsing and merging and and just being a very real Game of Thrones with TV and movies. That's what I got. Very, very good. Very, very vague, Charlie. <laughs> I, I was working on it. That's how much prep I did. It's all, it's all it's okay. from here and here. Okay. So I think we're going to continue to, in TV, I think we're going to continue to reboot a lot of things that worked in the past. And I think some of those things will be properties, like we've already heard about X-Files coming back. I think we're going to see um marvel realized there's money same thing with dc i think there's money to be made in things that were very popular in the past and bring those back so i think we could see in, t in the tv lens i think we could see maybe animated versions of things uh that were popular to come back so like you think of like the we got the x-men 97 mm -hmm. we could see the spider-man either spectacular spider-man come back or see maybe um the Spider-Man 92, 91, when did that, 90, that 90, 94, something, 94, 95. I yeah. could see maybe that come back as well. Okay. Um, because I think there's a desire for those type of things. Smaller scale, you know, animation is the proper place for a lot of those things. And I think they could do very well. Yeah. And so I think we could see more of that. So more animated things uh, luring us from our nostalgia mm -hmm. holes. Mm -hmm. I've always That's wanted, nice. I've, I've, and I think it would be very smart for Disney to go back into maybe the world of Buffy and do a Buffy animated series yeah. uh, with a new with a new showrunner and maybe bringing back some of the voice cast because you don't have to worry about their age and you could do like right. uh, subsequent things with them. Even when people uh, for, even when people sound old, it's still them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, for movies, I think to your point, I think we are going to start seeing less superhero films every year mm -hmm. but i think what we will see is the budgets actually come in line with what they're going to do right um but with the success of like a godzilla minus one with a 15 million dollar budget doing as well as does as yeah. good as it looks yeah. i think we're going to start seeing more of uh that type of uh filmmakers who can do things in a uh, tight budget and keep it sound. Yeah. And that's where I think that's where you're going to see uh, more of her successes. Um, I think, well, we won't see many, uh, like you, I, th I think the horror franchises uh, are going to shift. I don't think we're going to see another scream. I don't think we're going to see another Friday 13th, yeah. but I think they're going to go back to the well. And I think it's time for nightmare on Elm street to come back. Ooh, um, so yeah. I think we may see yeah. a project like that announced, yeah. uh, which could be a big deal. I know the last one I never watched, uh, which, uh, uh, James, uh, James Earl Haley. What's that? Jackie, name? Yeah. Jackie, Jackie, Earl, Jackie. Earl. So I think that we could get something from that or, um, maybe another classic horror franchise coming back that we haven't seen in a while. Not but, Halloween. Um, well, there was a break because <laughs> Friday 13th is supposed to come back in like a TV series. Oh, but okay. Yeah, um, I, th I think something else could work. And then, uh, a trend. Um, I think we're going to see, more live productions or concerts 
or even Broadway come to movie theaters. Oh, yeah. I think with Taylor Swift, it was so yeah. popular. Not, not, uh, not, people can't often see right. concerts. Like you think of like if the Rolling Stones are ending this year and not everybody can see them. Right. Why not put it in a theater where people can see the Stones? Well, or yeah. See Elton John and out, or Billy yeah, Joel. Outside of the, uh, you know, the the opera series that you always see through, uh, you know, that yes. it's very limited. But yeah, something that's something that's a game star, like they could have done with the Eagles because apparently now they're done. But yeah, you like, yeah, I think Elton John might be done too. But yeah, the Rolling Stones, it was hilarious to me. The Rolling Stones tour is, I kid you not, sponsored by AARP. Saw that. <laughs> saw that of course yeah of course i saw that in the advertisements recently but yeah i totally agree with you yeah somebody grabbing onto a trend that was massively successful there's no doubt that they're going to push it forward um because they could still make all that money and and oh boy yeah yeah that's a good one that is right that is some rock solid logic my man all right. Well, that is it. That's our 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2024. We're not going back to 2020. It's banned. 2020, 2024 hours ago. No, I want to be. I feel sedated. And we're wrapping up on date one, two, three, one, two, three, 12, 31, 23. That is if you're in the U.S. Um, but yeah, yes. Todd, where uh, where do people find you out there? They find me uh, on the threads and on Twitter at T Oxtra. Secret Friends Unite is there at Secret Friends Unite and at Secret Friends U on Twitter. So check me out. I'm trying to put stuff out there, be more interactive with people. Uh, threads is still trying. They're still lacking some things. Yeah. They have GIFs now on the app. So that's a win. Yay. I like the GIFs. Uh, I am also over on Instagram and threads. I am C3 Carpenter. Spell it out. Uh, I, you can find me, of course, on the Secret Friends Unite Discord. But as always, my wife, April, and I do run the USS Grand Petoskey, one of the biggest chapters of the International Star Trek Fan Club in the world. We are based here in West Michigan, uh, but we have folks all over the state of Michigan. But I am also privileged to run Region 13, which is Michigan and Eastern Canada. Please visit uh, sfi.org if you'd like to learn more about it uh, and check us out at uh, grandpetoskey.com or at Region 13. Just give it a Google and I'd be happy to connect you with Trekkers in your vicinity. With that, friends, as always, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. Wax on, wax off. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server. Or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.